I was number two in 1990. I was shooting threes. You know, everyone would leave me open because I was considered a non-shooter. So I was knocking it down. Then by the end of that season, three, That's which was high. like, it was like top five in the league. Yes, yes. So it was mostly all guards and then mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And then when we played against Zhang Yuchiko and the national team, mm -hmm. I, I remember guys like Mick Panisi and Chris Jackson would be guarding me in the mm -hmm. game because they're on the national team. Yes. And they would be telling me, like, you're giving Jung such a big headache because <laughs> when he comes back to San Miguel, mm -hmm. he's not going to know what to do with you now. Yeah. Now, now you're a scorer, too, or now you can shoot threes, too. Like, he doesn't want you to shoot threes. <laughs> so, so eventually, it, what what was your role uh, uh, well, when Jung with Chico came <clears> back? When he came back, I mean, it was... I became like a triple threat player. I could. Mm -hmm. I was one of the top defenders in the league. I can shut down imports. Not shut down. I could... I could limit imports or you know disrupt imports. I can guard them very well. Mm. Um, I was a top rebounder in the league, mm -hmm. usually top five in rebounding with Kasi Talava and mm. Eric Mink and Rudy Hatfield and those guys. Mm -hmm. And then I became one of the top three-point shooters in the league. Mm -hmm. So now I can score and defend and rebound. So th there's not many, not many players that can do all three of those things right. at the top level. Mm -hmm. So that was a big value because it, it kind of skyrocketed me past a lot of guys mm -hmm. uh, that you know no one really expected me to surpass. Mm -hmm. That's why you became part of the PBA All Stars four times uh, uh, from 1997 <coughs> until uh, 2007. Also part of the PBA Mythical Team and uh, PBA All Defensive uh, uh, Team. You know, I was listening to you, and uh, you mentioned several uh, players, and that uh, brought back a lot of memories. No? Yeah, uh, yeah, the we names, had names: Alvin Patrimonio, Nelson Asaitono, yeah. of course, uh, Mr. Elmer Yanga, and uh, Mr. Joey Concepcion of RFM, and uh, and uh, Coach uh, Chot Reyes. Mm -hmm. uh, you you have very good <laughs> you have very good memory of uh, right well, of the other players. That's and that's and one of the folks things. Folks Adornado too, yeah. Yeah, and that's where I'm lucky. I, I was always surrounded with, with those guys, and, and, and they took care of me. They taught me how to play. Mm. Um, even having to guard, as a rookie, having to guard Alvin Patrimonio and Nelson Asaitono mm. and Noli. Uh, how was it, uh, how was it uh, guarding Alvin uh, Patrimonio and uh, oh, they used to, Asaitono at They the used time. to kick my butt. Like They, <laughs> they didn't hold back. Mm -hmm. Of course, we were the young Phil Ams coming mm -hmm. in to coming in to take jobs and mm -hmm. take over the league mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't like that mm -hmm. so of course you know they they hit us harder mm -hmm. they were extra motivated to play against us um, I, I just remember Nelson Asaitono my rookie year he probably averaged about 40 points a game on me like I couldn't stop him really <laughs> yeah, I couldn't stop him I mean he's and that's a misconception that Phil Am players have when they come into the Philippines mm -hmm. they always think they're going to dominate Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, a lot of times they do, sometimes they don't. But what they don't realize is that these guys like Noli and Alvin and Danny I and all these local players, mm -hmm. Kirby Ramundo, mm -hmm. they're professionals. Right. And they, this is what they do for a living. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're used to playing against NBA level mm -hmm. talent. All right. So when I came in as a young rookie straight out of college, these grown men were just whipping my butt like i couldn't i couldn't <laughs> do anything with them but eventually uh i met i met uh Ives Dignadice. Ives Dignadice. i was about to ask you about Ives right. because uh, i met him in the u.s last year yeah and he also has his own uh, basketball academy in in uh, i think carson city right mm -hmm. so he we actually met at a bar we were at cable car uh we weren't teammates mm -hmm. he played for ron jacobs at the time for san miguel right and he was he broke it down to me like we're having beers and he broke down how to defend alvin he goes alvin's always going to do this he's going to do this late in the game he's going to go to his right he's mm -hmm. going to post up on this side nelson is always going to go to this spin move to the baseline so mm -hmm. be ready mm -hmm. as soon as he catches it he's going to set you up going middle and then he's going to spin really quick and do a reverse layup um, he just broke down everybody's game mm -hmm. Benji Peraz is always going to go to his right, and he might dunk on you, which happened <laughs> a few times to me. Right. Um, and so when when he did that to me, like it opened my mind up. Mm -hmm. I got to, I, I 
because Ron Jacobs' whole philosophy is tendencies. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to know exactly what the other player is going to do, mm -hmm. and I'm going to shut it down. Mm -hmm. So whatever their their favorite move is, we're going to shut it down. They won't be able to do it the whole game. Mm -hmm. And that's why we won. That's how they were trained. And Yves taught me that. And mm -hmm. then a year later, I got traded there, and I got to learn it directly from Ron. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. I, wow. It was pretty good. I got, I got some good stories about the, the good old days. You should write the book about it. I, I plan to. <laughs> I plan to. As soon as I get some time, mm -hmm. I got to jot all these thoughts down and mm -hmm. you know get an outline going. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just curious again. Uh, you've been in the Philippines for how many years already? Uh, it'd be 22 years. 22 years. About, yeah. And do you speak uh, Filipino? Kunti lang. Kunti lang. Kunti lang. Pero ka pa na mag-Pilipino. <laughs> uh, pwede. 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 Uh, maybe you you would want to greet our viewers and listeners uh, in uh, in Tagalog or Filipino. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can... I can text really good in Tagalog, in Tagalog but yeah. I just can't really speak it so well. Okay. Uh, when I have to, I do. Like I, I manage the city club, and mm -hmm. I have a lot of. We have a lot of employees there, yes. and, and they all speak Tagalog. So to communicate with them, sometimes I have to. You know, you have to and speak. It's, uh, it's no problem. That. We actually had a meeting with our finance team two days ago. It was a board meeting, mm -hmm. and we we're all trying to get on the same page with with some numbers. And then our one of our, our CFO she 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 said something like like mukang whatever whatever and I said yes right and like <laughs> the whole room went quiet because mm -hmm. they were like you understand Tagalog I'm like of course I do I'm Filipino <laughs> but they were surprised that I understood what she said mm -hmm. how about your children uh, do they speak uh, Filipino they'll they'll be in much the better than me at mm -hmm. speaking and understanding uh, they are all born here mm -hmm. they've all grown up here their whole lives so yeah they uh, especially my daughter mm -hmm. uh, she surprises us sometimes because just joking she'll speak Tagalog like the whole the whole ride home or whatever wow yeah and, and you understand her <laughs> of course I can understand it very well all yeah right. all right currently you you're uh, with uh, uh, Felix, uh, Phoenix uh, Uh, fuel masters as an as assistant coach i was uh okay. i was for about two years mm, okay. lounge like a nightclub mm -hmm. what uh, about in uh balasin uh balasin island Right, that's part of the company. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not too involved with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm too busy here in Makati. So yes. the, the building in Makati, uh, I'm heavily involved with that one. So mm -hmm. I, I was forced, I was splitting my time between coaching and managing the building. Mm -hmm. And I had to step away from one of them. Mm -hmm. and, and to be able to learn business from someone like Bobby Ong Penn.